Uh, when did you find out about the trade and I guess your reaction to it? I found out uh, a few seconds after my alarm went off yesterday uh, at 11. And so I had a bunch of missed texts and calls and I thought I missed a bus or something like that, but I, I ended up putting two and two together and um, found out through, I guess, the media at that point and called back our manager and GM over there in Miami and uh, it was a whirlwind, but yeah, right when I woke up yesterday. <laughs> and I guess, how does it feel going from a, a team that had an outside chance at getting into the postseason to one that many believe will go deep into the postseason? I mean, it, it's super exciting. I couldn't be happier to be a part of this group. Um, from the outside looking in over the last month, we, pl we played the Blue Jays down in Miami. Um, it was a scary lineup to face and there's a lot of electricity and excitement around the around the league about this team so to, to be able to join and help where I can I'm, I'm looking forward to it great thank you welcome again thank you and go ahead Ben Adam what have the last 36 hours been like for you since you looked at the alarm and even getting to Buffalo I saw you on the field last night playing a little bit of catch and kind of meeting your new teammates yeah it, it's been a whirlwind um I feel like I didn't do much other than fly and play catch yesterday. But when I hit the pillow, I was exhausted. It, it was a, it was a long day, a exciting day. Um, met a lot of new people and uh, yeah, I, I can't be more thrilled to be here. And uh, it, yesterday was wild and I'm, I'm excited. Um, I, uh, it's a whirlwind day. Some guys take a day or two to, to move friends, family, loved ones, whatever. What makes your day or that situation different versus some of the other trades that we see happen? Um, I guess just being able to, to be so close um, with the team, with the Marlins up in Philadelphia, it was a quick little puddle jump away. So I was able to make it the, the night of. Um, so that was pretty cool. I, I made it here yesterday and about the eighth inning to the stadium, uh, just in time to shake some hands after a win. So that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it, it was a nice, smooth transition, easy travel. My, I feel bad for my wife down in Miami right now. He's going to have to pack up the apartment and drive up with the dogs, but it's all part of it. Thanks. Welcome. Yep. Thank you. Go ahead, Arden. Hey, Adam. Um, I almost want to apologize because I'm sure you've told this story a million times, but I'm just curious what the, uh, the genesis is behind your, your unique delivery and how you kind of started throwing like that. Yeah, I was 14. Um, I grew up a Mariners fan, so I was seeing Brad Ziegler with the A's all the time up pitching against the Mariners. Um, and I was really little, didn't throw hard. And my dad said, if you want to make the high school team next year, you should probably do something different. Um, so he kind of said, hey, like, why not mess around with what Ziegler's doing? So it kind of started in the driveway, playing catch with my dad, and just kind of took it into games and kind of ran with it. Was there ever a point like in your progression then because you started pretty early? So, you know, coming up through, you know, what the high school, college, NLB, like where somebody said, you can't throw like that. Like you can't go to the next level doing that. And, and you kind of had to prove them wrong. Yeah, absolutely. I remember the, the first year I started doing it and uh, travel ball, the, the coach was like, come on, like, what are we, what are we doing here? But I stuck with it. And a few months later, I kind of started throwing more strikes with it and, uh, by the time I got to high school, it was like, okay, like I'm committed to this and having success. So we'll see how far it goes. If I could sneak one more in, like, is there something from an outsider's perspective that maybe doesn't meet the eye that like is hard about, you know what I mean? About maintaining that release point or about, you know, the work that's going go in between outings just in order to, to maintain your delivery and make it repeatable. Yeah. I think that uh, for me personally, there's so, so many moving parts that if you let one thing slip on the other end, something else is going to have to compensate. So for me, it's about maintaining a strong core and being efficient and short and consistent with what I'm uh, doing mechanically. Um, so, yeah, I think it, it's it's about keeping it simple and keeping it consistent. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. Go ahead, Mitch. Hey, thanks for the time. Welcome. Uh, I was just kind of wondering, have you had a few minutes to talk to Charlie at all about how you think you're going to kind of fit into this pen or how they're going to use you? Um, not any specifics like that. Uh, I got to, to meet him and talk to him yesterday, um, him and, and the pitching coach, Pete. And uh, I don't think that that's anything I'm too worried about right now. I'm just happy to be here and help where I can. Um, 
if that's in the first inning or whatever, I'm, I'm just going to try to get out when they call on me and help the group that's we already got a great group of guys here. So I'm excited to just contribute quietly where I can. And perhaps a little more specific question, just from what I've watched of you and seen in the numbers in the past couple of years, you've had a lot uh, more effectiveness against lefties. Of, I'm wondering if there's kind of anything you've started doing or any changes you've made to kind of help with that. Uh, I don't want to give away all my secrets, but uh, I'd say going up in the zone has helped me a lot more to to kind of show them a different look as opposed to just seeing everything down, moving down. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's a few adjustments I've made um, now that I've been a little bit more conscious that that's something I'm going to have to do as opposed to just being a righty specialist. See, with the uh, especially with the, uh, the three batter minimum rule, just having to face more lefties than I have in years past. So yeah, I, I've made some adjustments. Thanks, Adam. Yeah. Go ahead, Caitlin. Hey, Adam. Um, nice to meet you. Uh, just wondering, like, what's kind of been um, behind your success this year? Looking at the numbers, you're a big ground ball guy, but like, what's been the key pitches for you this year, and what's been really behind the success? Um, I don't know. I I think just getting more innings, um, throwing more consistently than than I did last year. Um, I like to work. I like to throw. So I, I think the, the more I'm in games, the, the better I feel um, physically and mentally. So uh, I think that's a contributing factor, just being consistently around in the games. Um, other than that, just praising God. And, you know, you mentioned the Blue Jays are an exciting team to join. I mean, when you were on the other side, what were your biggest takeaways from this team? And I guess what makes you most excited to now be part of it? They can hit. <laughs> it's it's fun. To, well, it's fun now that I'm with them. But on on the other side, when you look at that lineup before the game starts, it's like, whoa, there's not there's not a break in it. Like you got to fight your way through one through nine. So uh, I think that that's uh, one of the biggest takeaways from the outside. And on the inside, it's cool to know that you're going to have that support um, with the offense every day, and it's it's not as do or die with a run here and there um, from the pitching side. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Ben. Adam, when you look at kind of the, the transition through your career, even from a young age to now, uh, the novelty of being a side armor slash submariner style pitcher is, is almost coveted because of the different looks you can give a, a bullpen, not only your opponent, but the bullpen as well. How do you how do you think the evolution of guys in your role have become coveted within different organizations and, and what you kind of fit in and how you can complement this, this bullpen here. Yeah. I, I think that uh, it's important in a bullpen to have a bunch of different looks, whether it's lefties and righties and arm angles and velocity and breaking stuff. So, I mean, it all plays into a successful bullpen, I think to have different looks. Um, so I'm just happy to, to be a part of it as the, the guy that throws the weirdest, I guess. <laughs> And just for clarity, side armor? Uh, I've been called both. I don't really have a preference. Submarine or side armor, whatever, whatever works. I don't want to insult the sidearm nation. So, uh, <laughs> uh, binder is another one I've gotten before, but okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Go ahead, Gregor. Hey, Adam. Thanks for doing this. Um, Miami tends to, to, to make a lot of trades with guys who are in the final year of their contract. So some people were probably expecting some deals, but you have a few years left uh, on your deal. Um, did the trade come as a surprise to you? Were you kind of mentally preparing for, for the possibility of being on the move in July or, or how did you handle that? I think as long as I've been around baseball, you know that crazy things can happen. So you should never count anything out, but uh, yeah, honestly, I, I wasn't expecting to be, the guy traded out of, out of that bullpen. Um, there's a lot of other names being thrown around there, but that's, that's the way it is. Uh, God has a plan and I'm here for a reason. So I'm just happy it was my name called and uh, excited to, to join this group. For sure. Um, it, it's been a bit of a struggle for the Jays bullpen this year. I mean, you would have had a lot going in my, uh, on in Miami, but do you pay attention to like when you're in Miami, would you pay attention to how other, other teams bullpens are doing, or are you just kind of more, more concerned to what you, you have going on and, and what do you think about joining the, the group that's down there right now? Uh, I think probably more the latter. I, I haven't been really aware of how other league or other teams bullpens have been doing up to this point. I think you kind of just try to focus on what you're doing and, keep your head down and get out when they call you. Um, 
But like I said, this group of guys we got here has been winning games, and I'm just excited to help contribute where I can and when I'm called. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. Go ahead, Hazel. Adam, just curious whether you had any connections with anybody on the Blue Jays. Um, I knew the first base coach, Pazinski, from uh, from Cleveland back in the day, and I, I know one of the athletic trainers here from Cleveland as well, Andrew Pitkin. Um, so a couple familiar faces. Uh, I played with AJ Cole. I know he's rehabbing right now. Uh, another Cleveland guy a couple years ago. But other than that, it's been a fresh group and a new family. Great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Adam.